you having fun? Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, it's definitely nice. It's cool to be able to bring the game back to a lot of people in the States who I kind of uh, used to know back in the day, you know, that who don't get to play anymore, you know, who had to quit after Black Friday or whatever. So I can sort of let a lot of my old friends back home kind of uh, play online poker vicariously through me. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah, so doing what I can to sort of grow the game a little bit in the online space. I think Twitch is a, a pretty good vehicle for, you know, teaching people a little bit more about how it works and just kind of watching a pro go through the motions of a, of a day-to-day grind. Not much here for either player. Eric makes a pair. Justin picks up a gut shot. Look, Eric is going to bet his pair. He really, he's he really so weak does. This is almost a bluff. Yeah, he really does bet like every pair when he makes pairs. I'd like to see Justin check back some maybe decent hands and then raise some turns. Yeah, that'd be a nice adjustment. Are those Eric's time chips like floating across the table there? Yeah. Eric, 9-5 suited. We come in for a bigger raise. Justin with the ace-6. We're seeing some 2.5xing now. Yeah, here's another reasonable example of a hand that, you know, you see some players just kind of shove. I don't know about for 25 big ones, but, you know, once you start getting closer to 20, uh, Justin's ace-6, as you can see, has pretty good raw equity, but it can be pretty tricky to play on most flops, so a lot of players try to just gobble that up pre-flop and... Take it down. Yeah, it seems like a pretty weak hand to get stacks in with heads up, but when you figure out, you know, how much is in the middle each hand, just taking down the pot free fall starts to look real attractive with the stacks being at this depth. And Justin with the best hand here. But he's gonna have trouble protecting his equity. Eric might start bluffing on this turn. So Justin with ace high, not going to go anywhere just yet. He has caught Eric bluffing a few times with this sort of line. So we'll see what happens on the river. River's a deuce, no help for Eric. So it's going to be up to whether he can bluff again and whether Justin can call again if he does. Hey, I don't mind a bet from Eric here. Yeah, I mean, once you reach the river this way, seems like a reasonable enough hand to bluff with. It's cutting out a lot of chips here. Well, he, he tends to do yeah, this he, when he's he... considering a bet. Counts down his stack. And he checks. So I wonder if that's some kind of uh, tell that when he doesn't count down his stack, he's strong because we've seen him earlier in the match when he's strong just kind of bet very quickly. For example, in that hand against Zach where Zach had the pair of fives and um, Eric rivered the straight, he bet pretty quickly without needing to count down his stack. But now with Zach, he hasn't really, he's been reluctant to fire, or, or, I'm sorry, against Justin. He's been uh, reluctant to fire the river. However, every time he's considered it, he's count down his stack before checking. And definitely the sort of thing you have to look out for when you're playing these tournaments, especially for a prolonged period with the same player. Heads up is the epitome of that, really. You're playing so many hands against the same guy that uh, it's really worth looking out for physical tells and paying a lot of attention to everything your opponent's doing. It can be hard to, you know, keep, keep that level of focus for the whole match, especially if it drags on and on, but there's a lot you can pick up if you're looking for it. 
Yeah, some players are really good at that. I, I gotta say, that's definitely not my strong suit. Yeah, same. I'm more of a math and numbers guy. So Justin with an open-ended and overcards to the three. Eric with a pair of threes. No help for anybody. I'd like to see some aggression from Justin here. Yeah, I think he's going to continue to fire. Yeah, Sam. He's got to draw to the nuts. Seems like a pretty good candidate Rainbow to board. just bet all three. Or at least bet two. You got to think Eric's going to have a lot of twos, a lot of threes. Well, he checks. There was a seven. That's a pretty bad card to keep bluffing. Now, Eric may not be folding, and Eric might just value bet himself. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate this. Yeah, I definitely would have liked to see a turn bet from Justin here. But now he's sort of uh, out of good options. Eric Afriot takes it down, and we are back to having a 2-1 to one chip lead for Justin Zaki, the 33-year-old pro out of Tampa, Florida, up against the amateur who's had a lot of success for, for an amateur in his poker career. Eric Afriot is a 48-year-old real estate investor from Montreal, Canada. Eric is married with two children. I don't know. By the time you have your fifth WPT final table, maybe it's time to drop the amateur tag. I think so. <laughs> One, Eric. maybe. Uh, five. Uh, at that point, you're a pro, buddy. Eric with 1.9 million pro. in live tournament earnings to Justin Zaki's 1.8 million. So whichever player wins this event will have more tournament earnings than the other. Both of them will have more than 2 million in live tournament earnings at the conclusion of this event as both of them are uh, have already locked up four hundred and thirty four thousand dollars in change they're playing for a grand prize of six hundred thirty seven thousand dollars plus tournament of champions buy-in which is valued at 15 grand so limp check pre justin checks the flop eric is going to min bet I think Eric, try, Eric tries to bet 400000 It's less than a, a minimum. Justin calls. So Eric picks up a gut shot. And now Justin has trips, but he is not going to get any value out of Eric's seven high. And Justin will bet the river. Now, in a lot of uh, in a lot of WPTs that I've commentated, the winner of the heads up match it, it sometimes seems to be the player who has more stamina in matches like this, where it's just kind of grinding each other down. Uh, do you think that's a real thing, Mike? Where um, you know stamina is really important to, especially when you get to heads up and you're playing every single pot and you're constantly needing to think. Absolutely. I mean, these guys have been playing for. This tournament started last Sunday. Uh, a lot of these guys have been playing for you know five or six days straight now. Um, some of these days, you know, pretty long days. You have so many decisions between all the hands. It's wearing. You know, it's physically and mentally exhausting. And I think that this is one of the reasons why seasoned professionals have such an edge at this stage of a tournament because they have so many more decisions that are just automatic. They've been in these spots. They've played these hands hundreds of times, so they know what to do. Whereas people that are, you know, kind of less experienced, they need to spend more time thinking it through. And what do I want to do with my 15 big blinds or my 12 big blinds? Whereas, you know, the professional just knows. Um, well, we have a pot brewing here, and this could get interesting. As Eric has flopped top pair, but Justin has flopped a set of queens. Only 20 big blinds. interesting indeed. It's a pretty... Uh... Pretty dynamic board as well, so you might see Eric try to play this hand fast, which would be a disaster for him. Yeah, I think Eric's just going to call here. I can't imagine him doing anything else. 
So Justin's going to be rooting for some uh, clean cards coming out here. An ace or a three would be the dream card for Justin. Nine is not terrible. Yeah, nine. Pretty much a blank on this board here. Checked over to Justin. He's going to continue to fire. He's just figuring out what size is my opponent going to call me with. Yeah, I assume we'll see Eric call again. One point eight million into five point five. See, we're counting out the chips. chips out again. This is a very favorable board for the button uh, in terms of the, the very top of your range that you can have. Um, you would expect the big blind to take a more aggressive action preflop with hands like king queen, ace queen, ace king, pocket queens, kings, and aces. So. It's a good board for Justin to, to be able to put on a lot of pressure with nothing. Two of diamonds now does the river's complete a that diamond. flush. So there's... It doesn't change anything, but it may change the perceptions. Yeah, I mean, I don't see how, like, I mean, even if Eric were to, like, shove here or something, I really just can't imagine Justin would ever find the fold here. No. And, yeah, and I, I think if you're Justin, you still just have to put out a good bet. Yeah, he's just all in. Wow, yeah, Justin, all in. All in on the river. Now that's, I don't that's know about a, all in. It seems that's, hard yeah, to that's, a, worse, that's a little bit in. of an overbet right there. Um, yeah, again, I, uh, I, Justin could be thinking that he's going to, that this might look bluffy because he has a range advantage in this spot. That's possible. He, he could also be thinking, you know what, I think, uh, you know, we were just talking about fatigue. Maybe Eric is feeling a bit fatigued here and he he just says you know let's let's go ahead and see what you have well, well that's not make the, the fold. Case. nice fold by eric eric uh maybe a quote-unquote amateur but he's definitely been here enough to know that you know it's a marathon just an offering to show one <laughs> there's a queen oh man yeah, that exchange. Could have been, uh, queen that exchange. Or queen Eric, Jack, I guess. Eric asked him to show. Justin said, "I'll show you one." Eric picked the one, and and Justin looked at it as though they weren't <laughs> both the same cards. Justin eyeing in on that trophy, extending his chip lead to one step closer for him. He's getting quite close indeed. Eric hoping to get one of those diamonds on the trophy. But now with only 16 big blinds, it's going to require some good cards and probably a little bit of luck for him to come back from this deficit here against Justin Zaki. However, it sets up poker. Anything can happen, and here he has ace-jack. Justin, however, with 10-5. A weak holding. He will just fold it. I think that is one where I would defend out of the big blind. Facing a min-raise. Yeah, agreed. Definitely. Justin does not like fold the 10. He does not play the, he does not like the 10-5 offsuit. That's what we've learned about Justin. And make all the straights, man. Justin with about a three to one lead now. A little more. Jack eight for Justin and ace two for Eric. We'll now see if I... Eric starts getting aggressive with the uh, ace two here. Yeah, he has been just calling in spots like this. Let's see with only 16 big blinds if he's going to choose to put it all in. He does and he calls. What do you think about that, Mike? Uh, again, I think it's it's you know it, it's obviously a fine play. His ace is pretty weak. Uh, I, I generally prefer to just kind of try to take it down pre though, and and especially if my opponent's gonna do things like raise fold jack eight, that has pretty good equity versus my ace too. I, I'd rather just you know capitalize on that and shove it in. Yeah, I think it's pretty close with sixteen big blinds. I, I think that the trend these days is kind of 
seeing more flops and getting away from, you know, just doing a lot of shoving pre. Um, people want to tend to try to outplay their opponents rather than just kind of, um, rather than just kind of run the equities. But with a hand like Ace Two Soft, I think it's just like very reasonable to just to shove. Well, the Ace hits the turn, and now what Justin is thinking is a lot of Eric's Aces he would have shoved preflop, but Justin chooses wisely to check back his his Jack High. Eric going to bet the river here, and he will take it down. Yeah, the, the ace superficially looks like an attractive card to keep bluffing on, but if you break it down, Eric's probably not folding a queen. Justin has jack high, so he beats anything worse than that anyway, and Eric's obviously not going to fold an ace, and he's not going to fold trips, so you're basically only going to fold out king high if you bet the turn there with the jack high. Yeah, it's just there are so few, obviously so few, com combinatorically, so few combos of trips, and then most of Eric's aces shove preflop, so I think if you bet turn and river, uh, you could actually expect Eric to fold a lot of a lot of his range there. Yeah, if you're in a bet turn and river, I would, I would agree with you. So here's Eric on the button, 8-9 offsuit, 20 big blinds. Eric, again, not putting in the Eric. correct amount of chips there. Looks like he had no small blind, just tried to call 250. But Eric with overcards and a gut shot. Justin with a backdoor flush draw and queen high. Eric betting here. Justin getting a little over three to one. But it's not the easiest hand in the world to play, so he is going to fold it. Now he talked about stamina. Do you do you think that either of these players have an edge when it comes to that, or do you think both of them have been in this spot enough? Both of them are, are used to this and familiar with this. Well, I would say that usually you got to give the edge to the professional in this spot because they tend to play the longer sessions. They tend to play more often. Um, you know, they they they're just more used to fatigue like this and making these decisions under fatigue. But I'm not sure both these players honestly look pretty fatigued just by looking at their body language, how it's changed over this final table. So, do you think that's translated in their play at all? Not really, from what I can see. But Eric has gotten a little more passive, but that may just be due to his short stack and not fatigue. We've seen this several times where he's gotten shorter and then, uh, you know, played a little, a little tighter, a little more straightforward. Do you think that age plays uh, a role in in fatigue at all? It definitely can. Uh, I'm told, you know, very very often that people who are, you know, younger younger players have an advantage. They're they're usually more in, in shape they're, they're used to these long hours whereas you know players that are older just 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 can't do the late nights uh you know we're just just coming upon 10 p.m uh over here on the east coast in Atlantic City and I think that you know as the night goes on you Justin will start probably probably will start having that that edge in that department now these players have only had 15 minute breaks um every what two hours yeah and they have not had a dinner break either so they've that had is to, correct they've basically had to just eat food during their 15 minute breaks so eric going to 1.2 here with a pretty weak hand justin is going to continue with the jack nine offsuit eric is very uh, unpredictable and no help for anybody here Eric is in a bet. Justin with overcards, backdoor flush draw, and a sort of backdoor straight draw. Not good enough. You look at the price Justin's getting there. What was a 600,000 chip bet? Yeah, it was a pretty small bet. He's getting a very good price to call there. I think I would have called with the, the diamond in my hand in that spot. Doesn't seem like much when you're dealing with bets that small. You don't need a whole lot of equity to continue. 
still represents a you know a sizable increase to Eric's stack if he calls and then has to fold the turn. So I think that, that dissuades a lot of players from wanting to put those chips in usually. Not saying it's right Justin or wrong. Justin with 7-2 now. That's no good. Still anyone's game. One double from Eric would flip the tables. Give him the two to one chip lead. This is always an yeah, exciting. And the blinds will actually be going up again before too long. Exciting part of heads up poker is that so much can happen in one hand. Eric raising queen five of hearts. Justin with king eight of clubs. Both players with pretty good hands here. No help for anybody. Eric does have slightly better backdoor potential here. King high, the best hand right now for Justin, though. And he folds it again to the small bet. Letting Eric pick up a lot of these uh, pots. He is getting back into the game slowly but surely. Yeah, Eric Afriad uh, quietly building his stack up from 16 big blinds back up to 26. Not Justin a lot of the queen six of speed. big hands here. Short-handed at this final table. I've really seen two big hands clash. Really, this whole final table. I don't. I don't think we saw that. Where there've been many, you know, all-in like big all-in preflop confrontations. Most of our all-ins have come on uh, on turns and rippers, which is interesting. Justin turns a pair of sixes here with queen six. Eric with top pair. He will bet the turn. A lot of draws on this board. Yeah, I don't think Justin's going anywhere. Eric once again getting the slightly better of a pair of a pair situation. Four in the river does not change anything. So how much value can Eric get now? He thinks 1.3. I think if I'm Justin, I'm actually a lot more inclined to call a bigger bet from Eric. Again, Justin, Justin seems make resolved to his fate. And he's not going to win this pot, but tosses the money in anyway. And it's the thing about river calling. He only has to win, what, one time in four there. Yeah, the problem is, so you know, you we've seen... pretty sure you're not going to win. We've seen Eric make that bet with second pair, with third pair, so many times that when you have a good third pair, it's really tough to get rid of that. Yep. Not as easy as it looks. And the blind's up again to 3-6 with an anti of 75 now. Stacks are actually surprisingly close to even. We've seen the stacks go all over the place since Heads Up began. Justin's still with a lead, but not by much.
see the all-star final table that we had today. Zach Gernberg, Joe McKeon, Michael Martyr, and Stephen Sung all put on a great final table for us. And it looks like they might be doing a color-up or something here. I don't think there should be a color-up. I think they may just be Maybe recounting the, count. the stacks. Okay. Because they're going to 3-6 with a 75 ante, so... I, don't I, think, know I think they're going to switch out those uh, brown chips and get the 250Ks back in Yeah, play. let's bring those back. Why not? <laughs> That'll be fun. Yeah, Joe's gone now. Let's get those back in there. I think it was Zach who had the biggest problem with them. Well, they're, they're both gone, so... Even better. So yeah, 300-600 with a 75K ante. With only 36 million in play, only 60 big blinds in play, you know th this is the stage where, you know I, I think I told uh, told Kane earlier when you know when the final table started, when do we expect this tournament to end? And I I had said the 400,000 big blind mark was where I said I thought I thought it'd be over by. Um, and as you can see, there's not that many chips left in play here, so that's usually why I picked that mark. Um, but they battled through. Stacks are getting shorter. And we will see how this this one will resolve. Wish we would have made that bet. I still do think <laughs> I was in good shape for that bet. Yeah. I would not have won that bet, but Well, if Eric falls asleep here, that's not gonna help you. <laughs> Eric with 7-4, Justin with a pair of jacks. One of these hands is a lot better than the other one. Once again, Eric, or sorry, once again, Justin's premium just running into absolute garbage for from Eric. It's happened to him a few times in this yeah. match. Very frustrating. Every time he gets a hand. premium hand, it seems like Eric just has five high. Yeah, when you have a hand that you look you look down at and you're like, okay, I could end the match on this one. Just to watch your opponent so quickly fold. And both players are garbage here. Long heads up match. I wonder if they've ever tried having two dealers heads up to have it go faster. You could just have a hand ready to go as soon as the hand ended. Well, they did try that, uh, just having that as a poker table in general, right? Two different hands the being played hands. at the same time. Yeah. That was a failed experiment. Yeah, I wonder. I don't think that ever. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I was just saying, you just have that, one dealer huh? shuffling up the deck so that as soon as the hand ends, you can just deal the next one right away. I think they did that somewhere. I remember seeing that being done when they well, was there an automatic shuffle in this table? Yeah, I believe so. Or no, actually, no, no, no. I don't think there no, is because they're the RFID cards. Yeah. yeah, it looks like she's shuffling after every hand. Yeah, I, I remember. I think for one tournament they had a. Uh, I, I don't know if it was here, but there was one dealer would shuffle, and then just simply hand the deck to the other dealer to start the hand right away. Hmm. They were kind right. of sitting behind each other or next to each other. Seems like a decent system for heads up. I certainly wouldn't want to implement it for the whole tournament or anything. Yeah, yeah, it seems a right. little excessive. Especially a lot of places have, you know, shuffle machines. When you get it down it to also, the of wire. course, you know, that makes it more difficult, of course, to ensure integrity. Yeah. Yeah, true. So check all the way down here, and Eric is going to win with a better king high. All of a sudden, we got a match again, boys. I don't think Eric was ever super out of it. He was short for a while, but he, he never... 16 big blinds to 56, 54, pretty, pretty right? Pretty down that there, was, but... Or 57? I, I think it's more impressive that the, there was not a single all-in when he was down that short at any point. 
Just scraping his way back. I mean, Justin made a couple of folds of like kind of weak hands that happened to be ahead, but the, he was getting about five to one on the flop in both of them. So it's certainly, uh, I think with the jack, the jack nine with the jack of diamonds, he certainly could have floated that one. The king eight, a little bit tougher because he just had like no connection to the board there, even though he had king high. But uh, yeah, it's, it can turn around quickly. Heads up. Well, I talked to Justin on break. He said that he was talking to Eric and they were going to see how late they could keep it going just for fun. <laughs> They're doing a good job so far. Not true, by the way. Here, Eric with the Jack Deuce and the big blinds. He's considering a defend. Whoa, we three bets. There's the three bet. We don't he know what Justin has. Much. Well, Pretty small now, sizing. On, on very the small here. sizing. Now, this is something that we saw, Almost. you know, at the start of this final table from Eric. Wow. And, and kind of surprised to only be seeing it now because it worked so well for him. He was getting raises through. He was getting three uh, squeezes through. Look at that. He finds a stride, and he pulls himself just even with Justin with that pot. Yeah, interesting, because he hasn't really threw that much in the match. So if you're Justin, you see that small sizing suddenly. It does actually look quite strong. It's hard to put your opponent on jack two when he was his first three bet, and he makes it like sizing that's begging you to enter the pot with him. Right. And Justin again with a monster hand and his opponent with nothing. Now that's something in heads up poker that you don't see as much as you would in, in a three hand tournament or uh, you know uh, six max when it's folded around to the button for example and then we saw Joe McKeon three bet the ace deuce off in the big blind. You don't see it as much heads up uh, just taking hands that you otherwise would fold and three betting them. It's it's really heads up has become a game uh, where the, because the uh, button needs to defend so much, every three bet is is kind of with a value hand. It's just a, a different level of value hand. Would you agree with that, Brian? Yeah, that's, that seems reasonable. You're you're not choosing pure air heads up quite so much. The other thing about heads up is ICM is out the window now. It's, it's just winner take all. So there's really no point in. Uh, you know, so, sometimes it like three or four handed, if the button raises and you three bit out of the big blind, they have to worry about, you know, their stacks relative to the other players. So they might fold more. But in this sort of spot, it's just like they just go for it. There's nothing left. No yeah. more jumps left to make. Yeah, I think the worst. So Eric hand, with a decent hand. I think the worst hands that are, are generally three bet uh, heads up out of the big blind are hands like Jack Nine. I think a lot of. Uh, Solvers would tell you to merge your merge that between calling and three betting. Um, so it, it and then it it used to be the case where there were more three like back in the day I remember playing a lot of heads up and there was more like pure three bet bluffing just like you know Tom Dwan had the nine three of hearts or or whatnot. Um, that's kind of gone out of vogue these days. Yeah, I think you still see some of that depending on the. You know the players and the, and the situation, um, especially the stack depth can change a lot of that. Eric again with a very weak hand, well, and Justin was quite a strong one last time, and and now he looks like he's going to come in for a raise, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, Eric seems like he likes to take more aggressive actions when he's kind of in control of the match. Yeah, he's more playing to the beat of the match rather than just the cards he's being dealt, it seems. You know, he he folded a couple of times, and he's like, all right, I'm not folding again. I'm going to raise this one. Right. And we saw him, when he was losing a lot of pots, fold the ace four in the big blind, so. I don't like this flat from Justin in the big blind here. You'd be just trying to three bet and get this in? Three bet and see what happens? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would three bet for value I would three bet probably three bet fold at 29 big blinds I think that Justin here could I mean, gonna win. when's the last time Justin is three bet I uh, he did it once I think with a when he had didn't he have queens or something early in the match yeah so because Justin's three bet range is going to be perceived as very strong I think Justin can get away with a 2.6 2.7x three bet there sure. with king queen um, and then if Eric were to shove, I, I, I throw it away.
Eric's turn for a walk there, and he takes it down with a weak ace, and we are back to exactly even again. Anybody's game here at Borgata. The Borgata Winter Open, these two players playing for 637000 plus 15k entry to the Tournament of Champions. This tournament started with 1,244 entrants, and now it's down to two. But both players that suited eight here. Justin's is a lot better, though. Eric will limp in. Justin content to check. Lost draw for Eric. And that should be good enough. I wouldn't hate seeing Justin lead some of these scenarios. I'm not saying he necessarily has to with this hand. But uh, just in general on these kind of low boards, we haven't seen really any leading at all in these check pots. And, and there's definitely room for that, um, especially, you know, the, the types of hands that Eric has been limping that definitely don't always connect with the board. With that small pot, Eric does take the chip lead. I mentioned earlier I didn't think we'd see a grinding style match, but it looks like that's what we've got ourselves here. Yeah, raising a fold, Justin wins with the King Five suited. Yeah, the, the blind increases will keep this from going on too long. I think another twenty minutes or so the blinds will go up to what, eight hundred K? Uh yeah. Maybe seven hundred K. Eric, hey, hey, we'll check this trophy out, guys. Look who we're playing for. Well, he's already on there, so he, he should be familiar with it. Yeah, maybe he's looking for his name. Trying to figure out where they're going to put his... What, what is it they put on the name? Uh, they put a small uh, small diamond in the corner of your plaque for each a diamond. Uh, each yeah. additional one that you've, you've won. Scoping out where he wants his diamond to be. So Justin with the 9-4 suited... Gonna see a flop. And that is no help for anybody. A lot of these type of hands heads up where everyone just misses. Yeah, and those almost always go to you know to, to the aggressor. And, and this is why position, this is why being aggressive is so important. I mean, Justin with overs to the three and a backdoor flush draw there against a min bet. I believe he is supposed to float that. Yeah, he seems pretty pretty content on, on not calling a lot of those hands. He's looking for more made hands. Eric winning by default. Slight lead again for him. But all it takes is even one medium-sized pot to cause a dramatic swing with the blinds being this big. Yeah, I want one hand in, and we could just, just easily have a uh, the tournament be over. Yeah, this stacked up that is not at all out of the question. To, uh, Do you enjoy that about heads up in a tournament, or is that is that stressful for you at all? When you know you 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 have a grinding match, you're playing for hours versus someone, and then you know that any one small misstep, one cooler, and the tournament could be over. It can be. There's also actually like an element of relief at some point, just because you've been playing for so long, and you know even if. Like in the long term, yeah, getting second instead of first is terrible. Like you're you're losing out on a lot of money. It's it's really not a good result for you. But you know, in the short term, you can kind of make your peace with it. Like I'm gonna just play my best. You know, if if it, if it all goes up in smoke in this one hand, at least I locked up second place. Sure. And uh, you know, you, that's all you can really do. You kind of have to accept that throughout the entire final table that the whole thing could just blow up at any time. I mean, we saw that with Zach earlier. He was sitting on a nice chip lead the whole time. And uh, yeah, we saw that with Joe as well. Suddenly out. 
Yeah, Joe also had yep. a, a really nice stack. He was in second place for most of the final table, and then just in, in 15 or 20 minutes, a, a couple of hands, and it just came crumbling down. Yeah, it's just inherent to poker tournaments. You know, it could just all blow up at any time. So by the time you get to heads up, at least you've locked up second place money. And even though you are now playing the highest stakes poker of the entire tournament, there, there's this element of, uh, all right, I made it here. You know, I can just give it my all. And if it doesn't work out, it's not going to work out. Justin with a 3 2. We're going to see more walks here, I suspect. A lot of walks these last few hands. There were, but in, in, in the player's defense, they've, they've been getting dealt some really bad hands here. Let's get some, oh, yeah, let's sorry, get some they, face they were cards all correct in this deck, walks, huh? I think. They were all correct walks. It's just, uh, it, it takes a while between hands when there's a string of walks. You feel it. Eric now with the 7-3, and we may see another one. Justin, uh, <laughs> mildly frustrated there, getting another walk with a good hand. I mean, 89 suited is obviously not a premium like some of the other hands he's had, but it's, it's still quite good. Yeah, I mean, when you have hands like that are that are that good and playable heads up, you just don't mind. Uh, you just don't mind seeing flops and getting in there and playing. Although I gotta say I never hate a walk, so and walks are pretty nice heads up. I mean you're getting a small blind and the antes and your own big blind back. That's not bad. So Justin can just limp in here with the seven six. Eric will check. Might see a bit more limping now that the stacks are shallower. Although we've already seen a decent amount. Everyone misses. Justin is going to check here instead of stabbing at it. Now Eric has top pair. Is he, is he allowed to play standing up like that? <laughs> so this is a queen. Once your name's on the trophy, you're allowed to do whatever you want. Is that right? I don't know. Maybe. Eric opening up a nice lead now, 10 big blinds. Yeah, this is the largest lead we've seen him have in a while. Actually, this whole heads-up match, I think. I think so, yeah. Not much here for Justin. I got to say, we have not seen a lot of check check after uh, someone raises preflop. I wouldn't mind seeing some of the players mix that in a little bit more. Uh, it's, it's good. You can get your opponent to make some mistakes. Two monsters here for these two. Eric is opening up more and more of a lead here, just taking down all these small pots. He's almost two to one. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I kind of was... was referencing this earlier in the match like if, if both players just get really bad hands 
I, I think Eric might be the favorite to win this tournament. If, if the players are the ones are connecting with the board, I think Justin's going to tend to play his hands a little better. But when both players seem to miss, Eric is always the one on the aggressive side. Yeah, it can be tough to play against somebody who just relentlessly, you know, puts more and more pressure on you heads up. Absolutely. It's just really hard to make a hand. So the, you're going to get card dead a lot. And, you know, if, you're, if the other players is consistently taking the lead and all the hands, it can be very difficult. Well, that'll help Justin take the lead. Top two. A great flop for Justin. But he's probably not going to win a whole lot here. Justin is uh, trying to string his opponent along in this spot, but the board has run out a little bit ugly for him. We'll see how this plays out on the river. So a much needed pot for Justin Zaki there. Bringing a stack back up to 27 big blinds. He is fighting hard to try to get his first WPT win. Now you mentioned Zachy's had a lot of deep runs both in WPTs and in other events where he's finished, you know, 11th, 12th, 9th, 7th, 6th. What's more frustrating? Is it more frustrating, you know, getting that close and missing out on the final table, missing out on that top three, uh, or is it getting here and then potentially finishing second? Like, is there is there a bittersweetness in finishing second, and at least I got second? Yeah, I, th I think second. Uh, I when I got second in a WPT, I didn't feel badly about it. So, sure. um, however, I think generally places like you know twelve through. 13 through 20 are the most frustrating. They, they sting the most, yeah. yeah. However, them changing the pay structure of this tournament made me feel a little better about getting 14th in it. Yeah, yeah. For those that uh, the the when we first uh, were playing here, uh, some an incorrect payout structure was initially posted. That was then quickly adjusted. Um, so players got a, a a quick second look. I, I guess you would have gotten significantly less money. Well, yeah, I would have gotten significantly less money had I taken fourteenth the year that I came in second in this tournament and uh, second this year. Yeah, uh, back then. Um, First place in this tournament was eight hundred thirty thousand, but I believe fourteenth uh, was twenty some thousand now. And 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 or what is maybe twenty eight thousand? And now I cash for forty one thousand and fourteenth, yeah. but uh, second place obviously is four hundred thirty four thousand. And I, I love this. I love the payout structure used now. I think it's much more rewarding for more players. Um, I think the the money's spread nicely. I, th I think that it was too top heavy in the in the past. I think that uh, you know. Borgata, the WPT. Well, everyone's worked very hard to bring a good payout structure that will appeal to everyone. And we've got a pop brewing as both players have flopped a pretty good pair here. Eric will notch Justin with his top pair. But I don't think Justin's going to go anywhere to a you know 1.5 million bet. Yeah, Justin's going to see a river here and we'll see if any more chips go in. Six pairs on the river. No help for anybody. Wow. Another quick bet from Eric. And another small bet. Will Justin pay off another small bet? Eric 
fires again. And you can see Justin rolling his eyes here. Like, do I really have to call and pay off another small bet like this? But it seems pretty hard not to. I think uh, I think this read about the quick betting is pretty ironclad at this point. Justin Zaki calls, and that brings him down to 17 big blinds to Eric Afri. It's 45. Quite, Quite a turnaround here for Eric. 16 big blinds to Justin's 50-something not too long ago. Eric Afri with a 2.5 to 1 or 5 to 2 chip lead here over Justin Zaki. Zachy certainly frustrated here facing those small bets. That, that I got to say, that that's one of the most frustrating styles of poker to play against where someone just keeps betting like one-tenth of the pot because you really hate folding, yet it's very difficult to just... It's so frustrating to just keep seeing the, a hand better than yours. Yeah, I agreed. That, that's, that's incredibly frustrating. You see it more often against like amateur players as well, although obviously Eric is debatable whether he can call him an amateur... But uh, you see these like, you know, repeated small bet, small leads on a lot of different streets. And when you have a hand like second pair or whatever, it's like, you know, you only have to be good one time in nine. But are you actually? It, it's very, it's very frustrating indeed. Is there any merit to, to maybe finding some, some bluffs on the river with some of these hands? Uh, with some hands, certainly. I don't, I don't think he really wants to with that hand, though. So there he just uh, open shoved ace four suited on 17 bigs. What do you think about that? I think it's a fine play. It's a little drastic. It is a bit much, but um, it, it tends to show profit against uh, most most players. Um, I, I think it's uh, is an unexploitable shove. Um, you, you know, so so there's not much Eric can do, and players that are going to fold a little too much there. You're gonna you're gonna make a little extra money. So uh, he he may think that Eric might not be calling correctly there too. Well, it's certainly unexploitable. It might not be maximizing, but when things are going poorly for you, it's it's kind of tempting to just default to the option. It's just like this definitely makes me money. There's no way that I can be wrong by doing this. I'm just going to pick up these chips and try to turn the momentum around a little bit. Eric with a nice draw there, Justin with just queen high. And Justin did not raise pre, right? Queen jack seems like a pretty strong hand. Heads up, maybe should have considered raising pre. A little bit awkward with his stack, but I think he has he has room to have a, a non-all-in raise range, and that seems like a pretty decent candidate for it. Yeah. I think that, that makes sense. If you're letting Eric get away with all of his limps, I mean, you know, even, even with a weak hand like that, it's going to have decent equity against Queen Jack. So there's definitely some merit to sort of punishing him. And Justin having to walk Eric again with another very weak hand, 5-3 offsuit. And, and as you can see, Justin Zaki down to 12 big blinds. Eric Affriot with 34 big blinds. These players are playing for $637,000 plus a $15,000 entry to the Tournament of Champions. We're here at the Borgata Hotel Casino and Spa, and it looks like these players are going to take a quick break here. So heads up play will resume in 10 minutes, and we'll be back. Stay tuned for the conclusion of this uh, tournament at the Borgata Winter Poker Open. See you guys shortly.